Ina no sa mane shate ya Mane ni ana ni ana no sa la ba so ya ya E ya ya na ni ana no sa de ka sa ba no sa Ina no sa mano sa ya Kingdom come, kingdom come, kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. True nobility in life is knowing the Lord and walking in his way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you will be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, a.k.a. It's the Bible Network. For more life-transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. Praise God. Have you been blessed this afternoon? I've been mightily blessed. Mightily blessed. It's like a military school. And the classical example Pastor brought made my ear to open wider. You know, the story of Abraham that they took the wife. I had to pay more attention on how to war. Who is that man who is powerless? I'm telling you. If you are powerless, you lose what belongs to you. Without any Recourse. Nobody talks to you about it. You can imagine if Abraham does not have alignment with God. And Abimelech took the wife. So staying powerless is making your life vulnerable. Staying powerless is being helpless. A powerless Christian is a helpless Christian. And one of the fundamental things Pastor laid this afternoon is that our communion with God translates to power. Yes. Communion with God translates with power. So, Jesus gave us a classical example. He stays all through the night with God that in the day he doesn't need to pray against Satan. He stays all through the night with God that it becomes not important to pray against Satan. You know, so most times if we are called into communion with God, we take it with levity. We take it with laxity without knowing that our true power is our power with God. Yes, when you hold the most time, you are high automatically. When you are clinging to the most powerful, power ups on you. So this teaching, um, this morning to this afternoon has opened our hearts to dimensions of fight. When you hear a good fighter, what does he tell you? He's one who knows the weapon to deploy, when and how. And it was classically explained that different weapons for different situations. So don't use the weapon that is meant for um, the devil, don't use it for man. The, the weapon that is meant for man, don't use it for the devil. So our ability to understand that warfare is dynamic. It's dynamic. Even God himself was actually consistent in pushing this truth. He said, don't worry about what to say. At that instant, it will come. Meaning that if it is what you have memorized, what worked for Pastor Tobe will also work for the other brother. You may actually find yourself in a mess. So God said, don't memorize what to say. At that instant, the ideal weapon will be deployed. So um, the essence of today's teaching is for us to be well equipped, for us to be spiritually strong. We have so many Christians who are casualties. Not because God is not powerful, not because they are not serving a living God, but because they don't know what they are supposed to know. Ignorance is one of the highest um, disease in the Christendom. You can have the most high God and you die as the least person in your life because you don't know what you're supposed to know. So this teaching has helped me um, personally this morning. My eyes are wide open. 
another aspect that oh god the lord opened my eyes to is that most men don't know what happened in the spiritual world we have dimensions we have this earth it's like a three-dimensional earth we have the spirit world where transactions happen that you don't know if you were not told we have known that that king slept in his dream there was an encounter we have known that god himself god sent an angel came to meet him in the dream not because of any other person but because of abraham's property you know pastor said it here that um god defends his own and i saw the is it fierceness in the eyes of the Lord telling him you are a dead man? No, you know, it, it blows my mind. God did not come to pamper him. He didn't come to make him feel cool. He wasn't polite about it. He wasn't trying to be civil about it. That He was straight to the point. You are dead. And not just that man. Another man experienced that to Moses. When the sisters, Miriam and Aaron were we are castigating him, they were backbiting him, they were making jest of him, trying to be jealous about him. God appeared in the scene and said, You are no, 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 no. I will deal with you. And Moses had to beg him, say, please, no, no, say she must suffer leprosy for some days. So when you belong to God, you are gods. There's no two ways about it. So he that is fighting you is fighting God. And God made it clear. Say, This is the apple of my eye. If you touch a man's eye, you know the sensitivity of his organs. You know there are some parts of your body that you will not respond. But when I put my hand in your eyes, automatically some of your organs will react. Some people call it reflex actions. Some, some eyes will start blinking because you don't want anything to touch your eye. And God says, you are the apple of my eye. He that is touching you is touching my eyes. So you can imagine where you are placed. You can imagine the exalted position that God has placed us and i thank god for today's teaching our eyes are wide open to know that we're not alone say i'm not alone i belong to god i am god's and god is mine hallelujah so this time around we'll be asking um for some of our contributions um some of the insight because the, when this word came it was not just coming like an ordinary word it was a word that was coming from the holy throne with power it was coming with light you know with stray of light it was coming with illumination so it's possible that you heard so many things in the course of the teaching that um, you think you want to share with this um, fellowship or we want to share in this house please the floor is wide open for you and I want us to take it very seriously that word from you can save a generation I hope you know that what you teach being taught today it's not just for today it's for years to come it's for the unborn that are coming generations to come so that light that came to you can save a dying world can save a coming world so i pray that the lord bless you in jesus name oh, amen praise god okay as i said i'll hand over to you very soon but let me um get our contributions from the congregation please if you want to say something can you be civil enough to raise your hand let me just see you please okay who is the first person something tells you let me be the second so that i won't be the first but can you be the first fighter hallelujah praise god okay can we appreciate brother nathaniel even as he comes can you, can you appreciate me even as he comes Pastor please come this way brother nathaniel thank you thank you thank you so much sir praise god hallelujah all right thank you so much sir for the insights and the knowledge you have received um from the very first beginning that god defend his cause not your cause and when any man is in alignment with god he becomes and he becomes one with god therefore god defends that man as he's defending himself so therefore i see how to win uh, the three-dimensional battle effortlessly is just be God's property, be in God's side. And therefore, because scripture also gives attestation to the fact that if the way of a man pleases the Lord, the Lord will compel even his enemy to be at peace with him. You can't touch him or his property or things around him. 
So if we know how to engage God in communion more, the requisite light to deal with men, the power to deal with Satan, all will be provided. Praise the Lord. So it's a call and it's it's a summer for us to engage God more. Um, the example he gave us, like Abraham, we saw it how he had so much deep conversation, communion with God. And when it comes to man, he doesn't talk much, but we see the results that are coming forth. You judge a man's quality of life by the things that are around him, the, 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 the provisions around him, and the things that are happening consistently around him. It will tell you that this man is having deep fellowship with God. This man is having uh, power with God already. He has engaged communion so much. Like uh, we also said, Jesus communed with God all through the night. And when he comes before men, he doesn't struggle. He doesn't need to know the name of that sickness. He's dealt with already. And what Bible also gives record that he hid all sickness. So when we begin to struggle with some things, it's a proof that our communion with God is not full enough. So when we commune with God enough, then uh, when we come to the least dimension of what which is with men, then that one will be taken care of. Thank you so much. Sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can we give my round of applause, please, one more time? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, the challenge of this generation is lack of communion. Yeah, that is one of the major disease eating this generation. They are known in every church, but not known in the invisible church. There is no communion. So that means that war is a war that is not that many believers don't know about. The warfare of communion and supplication. They can teach you so many things, but if they are failed in that place, you can wield power. So the issue of communion, I think pastor says something here. Don't allow, don't think you have prayer life because of need. Uh, yes. Needy life is not prayer life. Some people can know that they can pray marathon over the night because they are looking for a job. They stayed praying from 10 p.m. to 5 p.m. You said they did, of course, but it's in your mind, you did vigil and all those things. But the truth is that it wasn't communion that led you there. It was need that took you there. So we must learn this warfare of communion. Let it be our lifestyle. Let it be our devotion. Let it be our our default setting. Whether you have need, you don't have need. Whether you have abundance or you have nothing, that prayer becomes your life in the spirit. Thank you so much. Okay, the next person, please. Please, your question is welcome. Ojima, come. Thank you. Can we appreciate him as he comes? Thank you. Thank you. The Lord. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for the teaching. I've been tremendously blessed. Um, I want to ask the question. So no need to make any contribution. Now, my question is, I'm trying to see how I can frame it properly. But then now it bothers much more on the third dimension of warfare that we've been taught today. That's the dimension of light. The one we fight with men with people now let me paint a scenario of let's say i have a relationship let's say maybe a brother or a sister or friendship so to say and then i see that i need a person in my life and then i see also that that person also needs me in his or her life and then i begin to you know by let's say uh, insight from God, I begin to do several things to try to initiate that friendship or make the person see the things that we ought to do together to flow in the path of destiny, to bless lives, to just fulfill God's purposes for our lives. But then, trying several times, I'm unable to steer up that commitment from the person. So the question now is, is there a point where I should stop? or I should never give up and keep on pressing. At some point, should I be like, I have spent too much time on this. Let me just move on and do what I can do with my life. Or I should keep on pressing. How should a person go about such a situation? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. 
you know this uh there's this uh word that uh we have repeated again and again yeah that uh this amen is, is your what responsibility is your responsibility yeah. we have to be discerning there are some things you do and uh, you just you sensing you sensing your spirit that you should continue doing them but there are times okay when it's time to move to another ground you somehow you will know it from your spirit you move to another ground but very important to 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 allow the staggering of your spirit to prevail over the day there are some times you felt okay you have done enough that may be self appraisal maybe you have not done enough there are times you maybe people can be watching you or you know, their attention you have not caught their attention but you felt i've done enough to catch the attention but you've not really done enough maybe the person's attention has not been there yet or and then also maybe god has not even put it in their mind to remember you the story of joseph is a two years the the butler did not remember joseph when the second year ah sorry my sin be upon me i've seen i've seen you know so like that so you have to to wait the bible said they that endure to the end shall be what shall be saved so he said uh, the question is not safe or it's not direct but it depends on the kind of relationship you have there if you've had a, a relationship that has been soiled with before if it's not going to be like for this time depend on if it's a relation that's starting on the zero ground if it's a relation there are if some relationship you are starting from the negative because the relation has been soiled before or a relation you are starting from a zero ground. These are different scenarios. And sometimes it might take time. Look at the story, and that story of Elijah, Elijah and Elisha. When he said, God has sent me from, from Giga, right? Giga to Bethel, Bethel to Jericho, Jericho to Jordan. And he keeps saying, God has sent me. Elisha keep following. Elisha keep following. After some time, he called him. What do you want me to do for you? So there are some relationships you just don't be quick to appraise yourself. Oh, I've done enough and it's not working, it's not working. And maybe you decide to leave. And it is at that point, that might be the, you are close to the turning point of relationship. Myself and my wife were still speaking, as it yesterday now, about, uh, you know, a relationship like that. And the person had to hold on. He hold on narrowly. And then the relationship started paying off. So if the person had given up at that time like that, so and that's how the whole thing will have just gone down. Praise the Lord. So that's how it is. You have to be sensitive. You have to discern. You have to know where you stay and stay there. And then how you should also stay there. The things you need to do in that place that God chooses to bless you with. So that's how it is. I don't know if he answers your question. Uh -huh. Don't be too quick to conclude that, ah, okay, let me move like that. Just listen. Allow the leading God to lead you. Seek more counsel. And then you never can tell. Thank you. Can we appreciate our pastor? Thank you so much, Pastor David. And thank you, God Almighty, for giving us a word this season. That word, if you have not heard it before, please, I want you to write it somewhere in your journals. Discernment is your responsibility. Discernment is your responsibility. So, D I Y R discernment is your responsibility so if you don't have discernment we we'll make so many errors so many blunder you know i just opened to first samuel chapter 16 verse 1 and i saw the lord saying to samuel you have wept for Saul for a long time move on you know you, you, you are laboring on a soul it's as if the soul is not responding and discernment can tell you continue keep pressing keep preaching keep praying now this was the issue with Samuel he saw Saul missing the way and he started mourning started crying oh this guy has missed God had started, God came to him and said ah you are wasting time on this project so we must know the time to stay put and the time to say it's over there are seasons in God so we must always be alive in the spirit to know what God wants us to do part time. Don't labor. It's not, of course, it was said here, there are some fight not for you. It's not every so you win. Did you hear me? In a casual manner. Let's assume before you got born again. You used to have a lady, a girlfriend. 
and now you are born again and God or Satan is telling you that you must win that soul that soul is not for you let pastor talk about them in the evangelical ministry let them win them hallelujah so it's not every soul that you have to win let it be a division of labor someone else should win they had Bunky can win yeah Daniel can win I'm coming I'll give it to you mama all of them can win so you must choose your fight and fight skillfully please join me as I welcome mommy Grace David no I'm welcoming you officially <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Before you just yeah. that, that's the scenario you were facing. There's a particular my 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 boss in the office when we was giving um he gave an he, he just gave his practical example when he got born again. He was he actually had a girlfriend. They were in school, so they went to our poly. So he got born again, you know, on fire, you know, and everything. And this lady, they were he told the lady is now born again, you know, and everything. So. You know, and he kept going, and you know, he was on fire. My direct boss in the office. So he said, hey, "There's a particular day. He was, I'm telling you, you know, you've been preaching to the lady, you've been preaching to her like that, like that." So the lady, I invited her. Come, just you have been uh, come and visit me, you know, like that. So you know, and you know, he was preaching. He said, "This is our fellowship. Let's have it now. Just come over and everything." Say so you went there. He actually went to his house, and he was was preaching was preaching at the point but it got to a point that you know the lady the lady relay say so you say you are now you are now a bonnet no problem just come so he got there he said was preaching the gospel he was preaching the gospel now but at a point he discovered that the bible fell to one side and they were already beside crying the lady now said look at you you know the lady just brought to so the lady now said then I said look at him. but he cried. Ah no, he, he said he cried from that day. He cried, cried, no, since that day. He didn't go near. He didn't preach to the lady again. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so. Since then, but you know, he couldn't. Uh, he was just going with zeal. Yeah, he was just going with zeal. But this was somebody you had feelings for, and you guys were going out, and you got born again, and you know, so because of the born again, that's why you know, so, okay, we can't continue in this way. But you know, say so you, you have since I'm born again now. I had to. I have to save this particular lady. Uh, so, but uh, the lady ended up saving him by this other side. So, if, if wisdom is, if you feel you you have that, you can direct, you know, her to another person. Please help me to, you know, follow up by the, uh, with this so that uh, you use wisdom, you know, in everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we appreciate her so well? She gave us a classical example. Yes, you don't need to win. It's not every soul you win. It's not every soul. Zeal without knowledge um, is dangerous. If you have zeal for God, let it be garnished with wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all your gettings, get those things. Wisdom and understanding. Know the fight to fight. It's not every fight to fight. There are some fights that are not for you. Even if they are for you, it may not be now. Because time is also very important in God's agenda. What you are supposed to do tomorrow, if you do it today, you may not succeed. So please, let the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. I saw somebody raise hand before I call Pastor Tobe. Who else? So Pastor, you can just have the floor now. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, fourth, I would like to appreciate um, Pastor David for this... Uh, You know, sometimes when pastor preach like this, I always think it's too much. Can we just reduce this thing so that we can... Because see, life is hard. Life is very, very hard. You just have to accept that. That life is hard. And then you need to be skillful. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about David. It talks about two things about David that, that, that really helped David. He said one is the integrity of his heart. A second one is the skillfulness of his hand. David is not a stupid man. And yet, we see David struggle. For him to have gotten to that point, to be the father of Messiah in flesh, 
Life is hard. Just, just have to admit. You know, when Pastor was talking about the first one, which is the first fight about the fighting the evil one, the Satan. That Satan, Satan don't have respect for negotiation. Pastor didn't say you should negotiate. You know, he was talking about he only respect power. And that is why he always, Satan, we always work consistently to fight our communion. Jesus knew what he was doing when he was praying for us in 17, that we might be one as we are one. Uh, make this issue of oneness that has to do with communion. You will see it in everything Jesus was saying. In Luke 18, because he discovered that there is no way you will survive without praying. Take for instance, you can't survive without praying. You can't survive without having communion with God. I, I, I don't want to use that language that God was having guilty conscience to go beyond, permit me to use it. God was having guilty conscience to go behind Abraham to go and destroy his city. Ah, Pastor said he's, all, he's sovereign. He's all knowing. He could do anything he like. But you see, a man has worked to his, an extent that even God is prick in his heart. How would I go and not tell this man? So God is unfaithful. It will be unfaithfulness in his past to, to Abraham. If a man, you think it is easier for Abraham to work with God to that time? A man that has lived perpetually as a soldier based on the instruction of God. Leave your father's son, kill your son, kill the second one. It's as if when you say send somebody to desert without with a bottle of water, how many of us can survive it? It's not like they are paying you, say you can't survive. To give 10% is, is difficult. And then to even give, if God is even asking for everything, you, you can't even die to that one. So God, God. You know, Abraham has, you know, Abraham has worked with God to an extent. He has fought his, you know, he has, he has been able to win his own personal war. So I feel that um, what I just gained out of this thing is that we need a lot of training. A lot of training to just know. Discernment, getting your discernment, getting your feet stand in designing is training. God, there's a lot of demand. Devil had his own strategy. It would be foolish for a believer to not understand the, the, the strategy of warfare. So when, when we look at everything back and forth, we need to understand that we must be skillful. And the integrity of our heart in that area, we must have integrity with God when it comes to the decision we take in our heart. Very, very important. So I, I look at it and I see how God begin to work it with every individual that we always have a role to play we always have a role to play before god can defend a man that man is god is claiming that man to himself and that's the meaning of man of god the meaning of man of god is a man that is of god and who, who was used who, the first person i believe that that language was used for was moses he said, Moses, the man of God. And that is why when you see that some of when, when his sister were talking, they could not go, they could not escape. Another person God will refer to that same word as prophet was Abraham. He said, For he is my prophet. So you can't do anything with these people and go. Because they didn't recognize themselves as that way. Did Abraham refer to himself as prophet? Did Moses call himself a man of God? It was tied to. It was something, as we call it today, that was ascribed to them by God. Probably they earn it by their work with it. So, who you are truly will be determined by God, not by your perspective. Or probably you have worked with God, so this earn me a particular position. When you go, to, when you, you know, you can be doing it as a normal Christian, but when you face the real warfare, you will know your stand. You will know your true stand. So that's why I said, life is hard. You just have to discover it. And finally, you need to understand that there is no way you want to live this life without living it by higher life. David said in the last part, verse of Psalm 68, he said, ascribe your strength to God and his excellency. And no one should ascribe his strength to you. don't have the right to ascribe your strength to God, his excellency. When David, David was very wise, he will cry for help. He said, because there is no help in man. 
So the last warfare was one that, is, to me, I feel the last warfare is the most dangerous because it has to do with your fellow man. Is that one is is it Satan? You know, it's Satan, and you know what is required. Maybe by what by you know when you have power, you understand. Have... But this one, the last one, why you know why it's dangerous? It's dangerous because if you don't, if you are not skillful in the second one, you cannot, you cannot. Because if you escape, if you understand that you walk in a dimension of power, have you not seen powerful people fall? If you understand that you have a power, you can respond to your power. It will move to the second one and break your communion with God. One is able to do that one, he can use the last one. You see, this last one eh, is the most evil, even if you are still skillful with the second one. That is the second one that guaranteed the third one. And then for you to now be able to fight the third one very well, you have to the second one must not, nothing must happen to your communion with God. Whether in negotiation with him and something, that is why you see God coming to tell Abraham about his intention. Because that communion is there. Once it's broken, Abraham will not have the wisdom to fight Abimelech. Amen. Do you understand it now? So for, for, for Abraham to skillfully work with Abimelech, you know some of us, we like to reprove people immediately. We just reprove them immediately. Abraham, Abraham take his, he, you know, he took time and allowed the season to be complete. You have to understand that, like what OJ was saying the other time, what launch you to that season of relationship should be what will bring you out. Whatsoever launch you into that relationship, will, if God says, you know, I've said it here one day, that you will be in a particular place and the devil will begin to make sure that you are seeing other deficiencies of your mentor or somebody that God has sent to you deliberately. It will just shift. It is when pastor now get angry that day, you say, this man is not even, you will just begin to, you, he will ensure that you insult your helper. And that's how you, you know, you are losing a war in that area. And that's why I'm saying it's very, very dicey. You have to be very, very careful. The, the whole fruit of the spirit, you must, you must ensure you are working on yourself for you to find that third one very, very well. You can react. David wouldn't react anyhow. David know he has to consult. So it's not every time you have an ex, uh, uh, like what pastor taught us those times. It's not every time you have an extended hand that could actually save you. David was about to go and destroy that woman. It was that woman that said, Dave, you don't need to destroy him. Why are you wasting your time with this man? Two people. He has escaped for Saul. The second one is that David should go and kill that man himself. He had killed the other man himself. Another thing would have happened. But that woman came. Came as an instrument of God at that particular time. And that was to tell you that this third one welfare, you need to undo the second one very, very well. Once you undo the second one, very, I, I don't know why Pastor put it second, but I believe is the is the pivot that every other world rests on. Once you have that communion, you have that ground to come to have communion with God constantly, to make some negotiation. You have a ground with God that the first one and the second one might not be proven. But once once they remove that pivot and then you fall in the place of communion, it becomes very 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 difficult and i pray that god will help us most importantly our confession is that this world should miss with faith in us we need understanding that god grant us understanding in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we must be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding spiritual understanding is key without spiritual understanding no one can win a war so i pray that the lord will help us in jesus so pastor thank you sir the well will not dry in Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Tokbe, for the insights. Thank you so much. Can we appreciate this man of God one more time? Thank you. Thank you. In, fact, in one of his speeches, he said that um, it was a great honor for God to tell Abraham what he wanted to do. That was a great honor. And I have been taught severally that honor begets honor. The Bible said, those that honor me, I will honor. So please, I beg us by the mercy of God. Let's create enough room for God so that God will attend to our issues with all his heart. You know, there are some people, when you are doing your event, they will come. There are some people, if you are doing your wedding, for instance, they will come. Some will send delegates. Maybe your governor will have to send delegates. Maybe sometimes he will send his special advisor. Sometimes he will send his commissioner. But there are some 
events that he must be there. So some people have been so close to God to the extent that um, God himself will handle their, their, their matter by himself. The man Moses who buried him, it wasn't elders in the church. It wasn't pastors. It wasn't general overseers that gathered. It was God himself that buried Moses. That's why Moses has great honor for God. We were told he stayed 40 days and 40 nights with God. Sometimes what we call it, laziness to pray may not be, maybe lack of honor. If you honor a man, you can stay with him. So please, I want to push us, I want to spur us to this war of communion. This war of communion. That is where we get our power. So let's have this unbreakable spiritual hunger for God addiction to God and for his presence and I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus name Amen so okay who else has contribution or questions before we start praying okay I should give them at random let me see where my spirit is going I normally like following my spirit where my spirit where are you going to okay but Bola, my spirit has gone to you I really appreciate this man of God <laughs> hallelujah yeah Praise the Lord. Um, I don't have a contribution, but it's like a question. But during the also, yes, yes, I said it's no question. But so I have que I had question earlier. I wrote it down, but I think it has been answered. And it's on that um, third dimension, and that dimension is is one of the things that the devil is using to 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 weak believers. Just like Pastor Tucker said earlier, that the devil will try to paint the person that God has placed ahead of you. He will try to bring some things to you that you will be thinking, yeah, why will this thing happen? See? And I've come to understand that our God is, 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 is a God of order. Yes, there is always the place of rulership, leadership, and headship. And God don't joke with these things. And if God has placed anybody ahead of you, ahead of me, to be the leader or to, or to be the head, if you or me, if you think anything ill against that person, God will judge the person. So that's what I've learned. And most times, just like Pastor Thomas said, the devil will now open your eyes to see that which is error. And you, you are the one seeing that it's not existing. It's a thing that does not exist. So, and this has been my experience. This is my experience. So, and I begin to see some errors. They will begin to open my eyes to see some errors. And I begin to hold on to those errors. And me, myself, I begin to swim, I begin to wallow in error over time until God had mercy on me and he opened my eyes to see some things that this, 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 and this, and correct it. So, my question earlier was that how can we design when devil now come through man? Because. Yes, sir. Just so Pastor Ben now said it that this discernment of a thing we are talking about is, is a training. I know it's our responsibility. God needs to train us in discernment because it, it takes stage. Just like a, a, a child is, who is in secondary school, the level of understanding you have about some things differs. When you enter the tertiary institution, you have higher knowledge. But when you graduate, you are now left with your own head to use your head. Praise God. So I, I I believe that is it when you come to discernment. Yeah. It's level, it's level. There are some things you can't design. That's why we need to keep crying for mercy. You can't design it, design it because one, maybe devil has been, especially when devil is fighting you in the place of your communion with God. That is when that thing will happen to you. This is my experience. Maybe you, you, you fail in the place of your communion for a while. The devil will now come. That's when you now come. You will begin to open your eyes to see errors. And that thing is not existing, you know. Praise God. So, um, thank you so much, sir. So, like I said earlier, how to design this thing? When the devil is bringing me, how can I know that this is not God? How can I know that this thing is devil? That was what Pastor said. Peter was speaking for the devil. And Jesus Christ did not even see Peter. He, he, because Jesus operated from the higher dimension. He saw what, what, what was behind the skeleton of Peter. That in controlling the skeleton of Peter to speak. He said, Satan, get it behind me. Praise God. So I I, I wrote that question down that how can we design? Because 
uh, Pastor talk about being a uh, power. We have to have great power. Yes, uh, yeah, I am a believer that I love power. And by this teaching, I've come to understand that the power is there, but more than power, we need the place of fellowship coming to communion. And one other thing I want to ask the other time is that we, um, this generation of believers, we, we, I don't, I don't want to say we are not taught how to commune with God. Just like that, he said earlier. When he said, now it's time for prayer. The next thing that we, you will switch on your spirit. Ba, 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 ba. Smiley, ba, 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 ba. It is not communion. This is I begin to learn. There was a day God said to me, don't pray in the spirit. I was like, devil, I rebuke you. <laughs> he said, don't pray in the spirit. Begin to pray in your understanding. I said, sit down, the Lord rebuke you. Not knowing that God is telling me, God was trying to train me how to commune. See how the man, uh, uh, Absalom, was in it. He was, see Abraham, see Moses, praise God. Even Hannah, she has been praying. Maybe she is the kind of Christian that will be going to God. Not until she, she, she switched to communion. God, if you will give me this word, I will dedicate it to you. And that was what he called in, 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 the, in the spirit realm. That is communion. So I, I, my, my question is that, Believers, we need to be taught how to commune with God, even in the place of prayer. Yes, how to commune with God. You see some men, you go to God, they are communing with God. And you will never hear them say anything. They will say, I'm praying. You will never say, hear them say anything for hours. You can stay with them, you will be thinking they are not praying. They are praying, you know. They will just be there. Inside them, they are having words, deep words with God. But most of us believers, especially myself, I, the, the place of I said that training in how to commune with God. And when you talk to God, you don't talk anyhow because God is a king. Most times when we are praying to God, we are also binding and casting God <laughs> using his word. Because your word said, I shall be fruitful. Your word said, I will succeed. No, yeah, no, no, that is not it. That's what I've learned. So that, that was why I was just there, you know. You know that I have questions, I have, I have contribution. I was just, those words were just coming. And because the illumination of the word, because the first day I saw the flyer, spiritual weapon, I was. I carry a lot of body to know more. Praise God. So, Daddy, thank you so much for coming. Okay. Okay, we'll give you the mic. No, we're not responding yet. Don't be in a hurry. I have to introduce you specially. <laughs> because I do my life. She, she's not my sister, actually. She's my wife, not my sister. When I introduce, I don't want to do my life to come and say anything. Hallelujah. I don't forget what you want to say. But he touched something very vital. I just wanted to say something. You know, those days when we go to Abuja, I'll be in pastor, in pastor, we pass in the same hotel room. And sometimes I wake up in the midnight and in the morning I will see him. You just stay calm. You no know, wonder I asked him a question. I said, This revelation you shared today, how did you get how did you get it or something? So he said he stayed in the cloud. You know, sometimes you stay in stillness. You stay in stillness. Not every time that is there are sometimes you can pray loud. There are sometimes you can pray in tongues, but there are sometimes you just stay. No, he's post teaching something. Let that message come out of Jima. Friday message. Where he said that Jacob, it's as if he sent everybody away and had a love space for Messiah to come. So everybody went, he was alone with God, meaning that he was he has created an, a good atmosphere. God wants his atmosphere. You can create an atmosphere for him. So he created a good atmosphere and God came. So please, what you say is very profound. There are sometimes the spirit can lead you to sing. Something will tell you you have not prayed. A man who sang has prayed. The spirit can tell you to do so many things. What God wants and how he wants it. That was what Pastor has truth. But not just truth. That is your whole destiny. You call it prayer. What he wants for that time is just worship me. And that is prayer. So, song can be called prayer. If prayer means talking to God. Hallelujah. So, thank you so much. I appreciate you. So, my dear wife, what do you have to tell us? <laughs> Not my sister. My wife. Praise <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. Yes, I've, uh, I've been blessed today so much, like always. Uh, Pastor, we're grateful. These uh, this words are working. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Topper said something that... Uh, okay and i i think and that every of these uh, battles they are all together in this communion i'm actually going to uh, bola's message 
and uh, because i want it sounded funny but i want pastor to still talk more on it but i know that um when our communion with god is solid you know discernment will not be be an issue you understand it will not be an issue which should be we should be able to tell uh specific battles you understand but pastor I know we have understanding of this, but I want Pastor to talk about his question. Because the truth is, I've seen belief was sincere. I've seen believers addressing humans as as demons. Praise the Lord. Yeah, they're actually battling battling directly with humans as demons. Um there's a couple that is having issue, and then the man is addressing his wife as a demon. And this person is a believer. He said this woman is demon in fact she's a spiritual why i be spiritual she I, you know that and then me i'm looking at this is issue of husband and wife settle it but this person is addressing his wife as a demon and you are sent to pull me down all that so that question you asked and then it was funny i want pastor to address it you know address it so that we'll be able to tell when you are actually right. you actually yes and you are, you are innocently suffering a human thinking you are fighting with a demon praise the lord all right praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah it's uh it's actually that uh, third one the third dimension of of uh, warfare is actually very profound even the devil himself can switch to that ground you know satan you fight him with what power remember when, uh, if you look at the warfare in uh, in taking the land of promise you know i told you it was satan when abraham fought the four kings so his children when they were now coming that one was a war of uh, power might when they were now coming to take the land and there were kings in the land they were to destroy all of those land it was purely a warfare of power but to them they should kill everything from the least to the greater they should smite them kill them and take the land and when the gibeon i saw that power was coming see satan satan switched on to the third one to the warfare of light you see the gibeonite he said we are from a far country we are so far than everything and they now entered into covenant with joshua and so they won that war you see so if satan see that you are coming with too much power he too will switch on to that dimension of warfare you see why i'll keep ringing discernment and when god came god rebuked uh, joshua for his lack of discernment hmm. you know i've said before every deception is the failure of discernment every deception is the failure of discernment so now coming back now for that question is simple satan will pose as an angel of what light, light. he will take the warfare from power from power he will take it to light truth are you hearing me when he comes to the you know he cannot engage you with power he will take it to what to to, to light to truth he said he will pose as an angel of light so said i want to destroy marriage now he start making you to see no problem he start making you to see just like bola said you hit it well you start making you to see problem where there is no problem all of a sudden you start finding fault you will now be having scriptural backing you know you job is that's you see that warfare is very dangerous he said you shall know the truth and the truth what set to free you see what you see what brings salvation and, and healing that one is truth you see you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free so that one when that warfare of light comes it's truth there are people you have sat down with them discussing issues of marriages you have to make them see from the eyes of god that's the battle just to get the man to see from the perspective of god to see truth and light Sometimes you are engaging the woman, you are talking to her. It's a warfare just to make you see from the side of light. And Satan is very, very effective. In fact, he's most effective when he fights believers like that. They are they call him the accuser of who? You accuse a brother to a brother. Accuse a sister to a sister, a sister to a brother. Before you know you'll be painting issue, before you know, you know, you're offended, before you know all kinds of things that come. Praise the Lord. So that's how it happens. So the issue is let's go and let devotion to truth. Truth. When I when we take volume three by next month, we'll take the weapon, take the first weapon, I will explain further. But what can help us 
you see this devotion to truth and call men and women into truth look at so many places there they are not concerned about truth every time they gather they gather for gathering about things oh god will bless you god will prosper you things are moving but truth life how to make marriages work how to sit down and apply the wisdom of god to make uh, maybe your businesses to change your economic life is prayer if you are not doing well it's enemy not knowing that uh, productivity or, or well to come from mastery or innovation you know mastery or innovation but if you are not doing well simple that may enemy praise the lord so these are matters we need to address by the help of god look at solomon how did solomon conquer the world is it by his word wisdom wisdom how do you be, even wisdom to build your own life most believers they just like they just leave, they go to church they come back they go for meeting i belong to this uh, this uh, department and, and that's all if they don't understand their life is a mess uh, in relationship is sound they cannot keep relationship they cannot uh, they are just there forgetting that christianity is life is that i have come that you may have life and have you what in abona if you have that life anywhere people drink that life they will indeed know that they've come and count have encountered somebody no i met a man that man is different i met this lady that lady i'm like you know that you are if you're in an office people know that your life is different the product in christianity is life yes, sir. the tree of life the crown of life the water of life the spirit of life the book of life right everything what life the bread of what life the word of life so everything is what life eternal what life the gift of god is what life so people should see that life don't say you are a christian when the life is not there don't tell us you are a christian by word of mouth tell us you are a christian by life we manage when god calls you into my he calls you into the weakness of the other person you are here now helen has weaknesses there are weaknesses helen has we don't know you are the husband you are the one that will know it so when you know that god has called you into the life of helen for our weaknesses to see how you can lift her up hey, hey, hey helen yeah hey, this and that this is this, this, this you just sit down one hey, hey 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 you understand that's not the christian life praise the lord he said for this purpose of the son of god manifested that he might undo the works of the devil in the life of what bola so when bola comes into hell if there are works of the devil that you see there you sit down how can i undo it you now go and engage all the dimensions of warfare if you the one you need to engage the devil devil to let hell to be free or if you need to go and engage god in the war of communion or you need to engage hell in herself you see the distance a lot of us are far from christianity did I take it again? A lot of us are far from the very Christianity we profess. And that's why you see the confusion everywhere. You know how you say your wife is a devil? Yeah, he's from the water spirit. Well, because when, he, when the man himself has failed. Sometimes one of the fruits of the spirit is what? Is patience. So for lack of patience, instead of you to like, oh, go, I'm impatient or something, you put the blame on that person. He's always provoking me. He's always provoking He's always, no. He said, be patient. They say, love endures all things. Love hopes all things. Love what? bs all thing i take it again anytime you see something in the life of maybe your spouse or your brother how can i be of help ask the person one question as he pray for this person as he faster than pray for this person before the answer will be no to tell the person is not even a christian you know some people are saying they are christian everybody's a christian now everybody in churches are all what but we are not christian you may amaze that that person is not a christian he goes to church he knows everything we say he said the foundation of god stands sure god knows the people that are his you don't number god's people god numbers his own hmm. people are, they are not they are even pastors they are not christians yes praise the lord of okay. late god has been telling me this person begin to tone down relationship with this person with this person with this person and these are people that are supposed to be pastors in court he said, this person is out of me. This one has gone out of me. Yes. This person has rejected. This person, has, you know, some people say they have turned their back to, to, to the faith. This one, this one has fallen into a poor state. The person is preaching. One time, of course, you know, I can't tell any of you guys all of this. Thing. One time I wanted to do a, a, a meeting with somebody. I was telling my wife, I was moving there. I don't I want to do a meeting together. And God came and showed me that I don't do anything with that person. This person is out of the faith. But his person is preaching everywhere. So please, you don't number God's people. Right? 
you don't number God's. They say God added to the church. Abby, you don't add people to God. God called people to Himself. So most people you see they are Christian, they are not Christian. That's where you need discernment who to marry. But those of us that are not yet married, yeah, this person is a Christian. You see, wonderful Christian, when they entered into marriage, you see that this person is a Christian or is a demon. The attitude you are seeing. Don't forget the case of the giver. People will do anything to get what they want. They may be the most humble person in this community like this. In this, Yes. They will be the most humble person of this sister. Wonderful. They will run around, run every and everything because of what they want. Well, if I want to, you know, Satan will also come as it's one of Satan's own. Satan will call has come as an angel of light. If you need a husband, put your head down and everything. Finally, let me close with this story. When I tell you people that discernment is your responsibility, please take it to heart. A lady, when a place like this, then I was not into any relationship, and uh, I, he, he followed somebody for a visit to my house. And I just lost the relationship, and the person was a lawyer, you know, so like that. So ended the relationship. So the person was a lawyer. So and I was just staying with the person. He came to visit me. I came with a lady. I don't even know the lady. I didn't even know anything about. Just we're just talking. You are talking with your friend, and he came. Okay, you know, came with the wife and everything. So and I said that I, I really wanted my wife to be a lawyer, you know, because I've been to a relationship with someone that is a lawyer or something. So I just made that statement. Sometimes in the multitude of what you say, love. I didn't know that that lady was studying law. So when she was leaving, she let me use the word. She stole my number from the person's phone. When she left, she went back to school. She called me from school. I said, "Who is this person?" He said, "Social person that came with social person." I said, "How did you get my number?" He said, "The day they were taking her to park, like that." So she took my number. She actually she took my number from the phone. And she was studying law. She wanted me. So she kept, okay, how are you? No, so the person, no, so copper came with somebody. How are you? How, how are you? And everything, okay, now you talk with the person. So she now started asking me questions from Bible, this and that. She, she wanted me to disciple her. Hmm? Eh? 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 Yes. No. So she wanted me to disciple her, but I knew in my spirit. No, I now call the uh, Apostle Emmanuel Zaria. Zari. She's this story, uh, this story happened no, I couldn't hear, but she's calling in Zaria. So she, I now said, I cannot mentor you, but I know someone that can do a good job. You are in Zaria, the person is in Zaria. I now introduce her to Apostle Emmanuel Umwaro. All of us here know him. So I introduced him to Apostle Emmanuel that I should disciple her. When she got there, she served in that place more than everybody. So I passed by what well, this lady, you know, she kept <laughs> yeah, let's come and give me the report. The lady, this and that. she was and sometimes you come and sleep in their house. I suppose I just got married that time. She was everywhere like that. Even the wife, why well, this and that they talk so much about the lady. Now that is a very interesting story. So in that same period, shortly after that period, I started a relationship with uh, my wife, you know. You know so I started a relationship and uh, of course i told pastor ma told one or two person the day that girl knew that i started a relationship that was the last time you saw her <laughs> this was not one month something no i said the day she, the, she the news broke out that i was in a relationship you know i said i was going out and everything but he said people are terrible he said that day if a person ma called me say they don't see this person again no did this and that that he said that they didn't see her again they were all in Zaria again. this was not here so to tell you the extent to which he said the heart is deep he said that day he said they don't see they didn't see her again in fellowship she this was some very active in fellowship was spearheading was leading everybody in every in the prayer in kitchen in everything she was there he said but that day that was the end of her. they don't see her again and that was the last time I ever spoke with her and everything Never, I never spoke with her. So, discernment is what? <laughs> so, if you see that you're a very wonder, wonderful sister, and this and this and that, and that's how your life will become wonderful in marriage. In quote, thank you, God bless you. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank God I called, but I could have missed the dimension. Thank you so much, but I
you helped us to bring this fountain. Yes, thank you, sir. I hope we are blessed. I am richly blessed. I'm richly blessed. Discernment is your responsibility. Yes, it's not everybody in church that is looking for God. Some are looking for husband. <laughs> Some are looking for connection. Some are looking for appointment. So you must have discernment to know who is looking for God. Because if you are following somebody who is not going anywhere, you end up not going anywhere. May the Lord give us understanding. Yeah, that discernment, you need to stay a whole year to crack that statement. Discernment is your responsibility. Jesus met a woman that was caught in adultery. Jesus said, Madam, I don't condemn you, go. Jesus met some people doing buying and selling in church and he flogged them. What, what is happening? Same person. So there is a time for mercy, a time for judgment. Discernment is your responsibility. Can we be on our feet? Pastor, any other thing so can pray? We're coming back by five o'clock for the next session. Um, okay, just official announcement. Our blessing starts five every month. So we are kicking off today. So we're coming by five for double dose of this anointing. Can we be on our feet and pray? Can you pray all manner of prayers? All manner of prayers. So this is a very serious time and I will want every heart to get engaged. Communion has started. This is the communion. Let's commune, commune with God. Let's connect with the heavenlies. Can you pray? Can you pray? Talk to your God. Talk to your Father. Bless his name. Bless his name. Thank him for this fountain. Thank him for this visitation. He has, we want to equip us. In fact, he has equipped us with all that pertains to life and godliness. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. Madash Kabahan Desiya Kabaya Kaba. A call for prayer is a call for equipping. God wants to equip you. He wants you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He wants you to be a strong man. He doesn't want weakness. The Bible says, and her, so long as you are a child, you are not different from servant. He wants you to grow. He wants you to have stature. He wants you to be strong. He wants you to increase in every ramification. Malabanga Dishka, let there be a flood of light. Let light flood your life in the name of Jesus. Let the sunlight beat your default setting in the name of Jesus. That the Lord gives us seeing eyes, the heart of understanding in the name of Jesus. Maragaba Shandalaba, Breketo Zebra Kataba Shandaba, Leko Boska Baba Katea, Lika Goska Baba Babaya. We we'll know the time, we we'll know the season, even to bind the wicked world. We bind Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. We frustrate activities of hell against our families, against our loved ones in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, resist him. He will flee. Kabano Scar, rightly dividing the word of truth in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, ancient of this. Thank you. Thank you, ancient of this. We give you all the glory. A, a, a mighty deliverance is going on here. A mighty one is going on here. And that deliverance has to do with our heart and our eyes. A heart shift that will make us to see clearly. We'll see things differently. Oh, we'll see things differently. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. You have set us free. By your truth, you have set us free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are free indeed. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And amen. Can we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our life, we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.